Hi, my name is Eric Shami Smith, and I'm a nursing student at McGill University. I'm making a video today on what is pneumonia for the Khan Academy competition that they've organized with the NCLEX organization in the United States for nurses. And so I'm hoping that this video will be both informative and enjoyable for you. And if you have any questions, comments, or queries at the end, feel free to leave them in the comments below. So Bob comes to the clinic, and he complains about fever, chills, cough that just won't stop, and some chest pain. If you see someone coming in with these concerns and symptoms, you need to start thinking about pneumonia. Particularly if the cough is productive, if the cough has wet sputum or pus coming out of it. And to have a better idea of what that'll look like, we're going to go on to the next section to describe precisely what pneumonia is. And pneumonia is an acute lung infection. Remember this little word, these few words here, acute lung infection. The basic problem is that your lungs aren't able to effectively exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide at the level of the alveoli and the tissues that exchange these gases. The reason this happens is as a result of the bacteria in your lungs and the damage that they're causing, fluid builds up. This fluid covers the membranes where the gases are exchanged, and in addition, the membranes themselves are damaged by the bacteria, and it creates a barrier that prevents the exchange. As a result of this fluid, we then get a cough. Your lungs are irritated by the amount of fluid. They are able to sense that there is an issue, and so you have a reflex to cough up the fluid and remove it from your lungs. Very often, though not always, since someone is having this difficulty, they'll often have difficulty breathing. They'll have dyspnea. This makes intuitive sense if you have an issue with your respiratory system, an issue with exchanging gases, you're going to have difficulty breathing. In addition, you may, if they're rather advanced in their pneumonia, see tachypnea or rapid breathing. This is a compensation mechanism to make up for the poor exchange by exchanging air in the lung, um, the space of the lung, even faster. So now that you have an idea of what pneumonia looks like, let's get a better idea of what it actually means. So pneumonia is the leading cause of death in seniors and people with chronic illnesses. That's not to say that other people can't get pneumonia, but it's only that these two groups are at the highest risk for contracting pneumonia. And just so that you have a better idea of what that means, tens of thousands of people die every year in the U.S. alone from contracting pneumonia. And there are millions more who are infected with it every year. Now, let's say that you had to go to the hospital. You were admitted to the hospital because the symptoms for your pneumonia were so severe that you couldn't be treated as an outpatient. You had to be treated as an inpatient in the hospital. If that were the case, any given person, for any given person who has to be admitted to the hospital with pneumonia, the mortality is 23% after 30 days. So these figures, the tens of thousands, 10,000, I mean, depends on your population. But when you look at this, the mortality is 23%. It's one in four people will die if they contract pneumonia and it's so severe that they have to go to the hospital. So it starts to impress upon you just how dangerous pneumonia is. Now let's say that things did go poorly with our gentleman, with Bob, and that he developed some complications. What kind of complications in the worst case scenario could develop? Well, you could get sepsis, respiratory failure, lung abscesses, meningitis, pericarditis, or endocarditis. Any of these types of complications are going to be situations that, as a nurse, you're going to have to eventually learn how to deal with. We're not going to be going over how to cope with these, how to treat these, because they go. each one involves a much greater amount of detail. But I want you to get an idea that Pneumonia isn't just pneumonia on its own. It can lead to more problems, and this is why we need to stay on top of pneumonia. We have to treat it as quickly as possible once we realize what we're dealing with. So what are the causes of pneumonia? We realize that pneumonia is an infection, 
and what we then need to ask is what can lead to infection and there are many things that can lead to an infection so to start off we have bacteria their viruses their fungi their protozoa their parasites any of these microbes could lead to pneumonia a lung infection most often you're going to encounter bacteria and we're going to talk very quickly later on about types of bacteria that you're going to encounter but any one of these can lead to infection and it's worth noting that any one of these may not be the primary cause of pneumonia but they may lead to one of the others to taking advantage so I'll be a little bit clearer Let's say you have the flu, a flu virus. That flu virus is weakening your immune system. It's making your upper respiratory tract infected. And that can lead to bacteria taking advantage of your weakened state and multiplying and infecting the tissue in your lower respiratory tract, in your lungs. Now on top of all that, we also have aspiration pneumonia. In aspiration pneumonia, you've aspirated, you've breathed in, you've inhaled something that's foreign to your lungs, that's damaging. It deposits itself on the lung tissue, it causes trauma and damage, and it leaves an opportunity for a microbe to get in and infect. So for example, you might have industrial aerosols, there might be fire, there could be an acid, especially this is a big risk for people who can't control their gag reflex or maybe they vomit and they've inhaled some of their stomach acid. Someone who drowned that water inside the lungs could cause damage to the lungs. There's a dozen others but this is just to give you an idea of aspiration pneumonia on top of the microbial pneumonia. With that being said, in about 50% of the cases we will have an unknown cause. We're not going to know the etiology, the microbial origin of the pneumonia. And so instead we have generic practices, generic protocols to manage pneumonia. So since we won't necessarily know the cause of our pneumonia, we have different ways of classifying it. So there are three main ways to classify pneumonia. The time of onset, the environmental origin, and whether it's atypical or typical. For the time of onset, we're concerned about whether it's acute, from 24 to 48 hours, or chronic, where it's four weeks or greater that the symptoms have developed. For the environmental origin, we want to ask whether it's community-acquired or hospital-acquired, nosocomial. This is important because whether it's from the community or the hospital, you'll have different prevalence of microbes, whether it's in the community or the hospital. So you'll have a better judge of which microbe someone is infected with if you know where they came from. Our last question, atypical or typical, refers to the quality of the pneumonia. If it's atypical, it had a slower onset, so it was chronic, it was less severe, it had a non-productive cough, and it had dispersed consolidation. This consolidation refers to the distribution of fluid in the lungs. Is it concentrated to a specific lobe or region, or is it atypical and the fluid is spread out throughout the lungs? In contrast, we have typical pneumonia, where it was rapid, had severe symptoms, productive cough, and dense consolidation. So there was lots of fluid in a specific branch or lobe of the lung. The way I remember it is asking what kind of tea do I have? I want to look at the time of onset, the environmental origin, and atypical, typical, so T-E-A, what kind of tea do I have? The last thing that I'd like us to go over before we finish are two different types of bacteria that you'll often see. We have streptococcal pneumonia in the community and pseudomonas aeruginosa in the hospital. You won't be able, or I don't recommend that you memorize all of the different pathogens that will cause pneumonia, but since these are some of the most common, at least try to review these so that you'll be familiar with them if and or when you do encounter them in the hospital. So let's look at our keynote summary. First off, pneumonia is an acute lung infection. The red flags include fever and productive cough and it inhibits the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. If you can remember these three key points, you'll have a fairly good understanding of what pneumonia is. 
Moving on, it is potentially fatal. There are many different causes, etiologies, and pathogens that can lead to pneumonia. And two of the most common are streptococcal pneumonia and pseudomonas aeruginosa. Last but not least, for classifying them so you can have a better idea of what treatment to provide, we ask about the time, the environment, and whether it is atypical or typical tr uh, pneumonia. And one way to remember this is T, so time, environment, atypical, typical. This concludes our first video of pneumonia. If you have any comments or questions, please put them in the comment section below. If you like, click a like, and hope that you have a wonderful day. Cheers.